Hey, what's up, everyone? Austin Smith here with you today, and we're tuned in to a brand new segment here at Hoop Scene called Just a Minute with our Editor-in-Chief, Justin Young. Justin, thanks for being with us today, man. We've got a lot we want to cover in today's segment. So, brother, let's go ahead and get right to it, man. Let's just talk about the strength of the new Grassroots Basketball Association, man. We're, we're excited about having that here with Hoop Scene. What does that really mean for players and teams this summer? Well, I think we saw it awesome this past weekend at the Hoop Scene tip-off, the strength and the value of the Hoop Scene Association. I thought Ty and Daniel did a really good job of pairing up some of our top teams from the association against the shoe teams. And we said, like, listen, let's battle it out. It's kind of how we used to have before the shoe circuits came about, long before you guys were around. You guys were, I think, were in elementary school when we used to have these non-association things. And it reminded me a little bit about that. And I think what we saw was the value. I said this during the first start of the NCAA tournament when we saw Oral Roberts and North Texas and all these schools doing work in the bracket. And I said that the talent gap between college basketball is so small that it maybe not even it doesn't even exist. Right. And we see that all the time with travel basketball, where we have non-sponsored teams, independent teams, if you will, playing shoe teams, and they win a lot more than people get them credit for. I think the machine of marketing does a really good job of setting the table that there's this talent gap, and it's just not true. It's fundamentally not true. And we saw that on opening night at the Hoop Scene tip-off with a team like Ford Pro, one of our, our top teams in the Hoop Scene Association. And they got three guys in the top 150 nationally, uh, and they matched up really, really well as we had them playing some of the top teams uh, that we had with Game Elite and Scoot Henderson and that crew. But we also saw that with the Hypox, a localized team out of Alpharetta, out of the association, knocked off like some of their guys, right, with TSF 2023. Uh, in, in a really good matchup and back-to-back on opening night. And so we saw that, though, throughout the course of the weekend, Austin, with some non-sponsored teams from the association, the Hoopsing Association, playing some of the shoe teams. And, I, and again, it, all I could think about was that, that notion that I said that the talent gap in college basketball is not that big. I almost want to take it a step further and say that the talent gap in college basketball doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Because if you're good, you're good. Absolutely. And we're seeing that now with the transfer portal where guys are, are transferring up. And I was talking to a Division II coach. He says every good Division II player in the country is traveling out or, or transferring out and moving up to Division I. And I, I worked at the college level a long, long, long time ago at the Division II level. And there were players at that level that were better than the players that we would play on some of those paid games at the Division I level. So I think we're seeing it really – we've seen it for a long time at the travel level. Mm-hmm. And I think people nationally are starting to see it now with college basketball. But to me, Austin – that's what it's all about with the association is, is a balancing of the narrative of where the talent lies. Yeah, man, I totally agree, JY. And it's becoming more and more evident, man. You spoke to, you know, those guys who were going from D2 and transferring up and you got me a lot of mid-majors going deep runs in the tournament now, man. And, and that gap is, is barely existing anymore if that. JY, let's get to another thing here. You know, with the recruiting situation going on as it is, for a lot of high school players, this is the first time we've ever really seen players start to say they don't know what's happening with their recruitment. You know, you've yeah. got college coaches recruiting transfers and you got junior college guys, you got prep school guys, and then ultimately high school guys seem to get the bottom of the barrel. So, you know, what's that been like, you know, in your mind in terms of seeing players say that they don't really yeah. know what to think of their recruitment? 20 years doing this, Austin, I've never had a spring quite like, or even a season quite like this between the scholastic year and now where I'm asking guys like what's happened with their recruitment, like who's offered you, who are you hearing from? Uh, and, and guys will kind of look at me. I don't want to say embarrassed, but almost like a, a, as a state of like, I, I don't know. Like I genuinely don't know, like almost like they're lost, you know, like I remember I got lost one time in um, what airport was, I? I think I was in Chicago and I was just like really stumped. I didn't know where to go. I had no direction. And that same feeling I remember is really similar to what I've seen on guys' faces. Like they have no idea what direction to go to, no, what, no, have no idea what gates to connect at. And I think it's been a really odd year where you have players who by April 1st, about right now, have a pretty good sense like, okay, my recruitment is going to trend Ohio Valley Conference, okay? Or my recruitment is going to trend West Coast Conference, or I know that I'm going to be like an SEC, ACC level player. And I think for the most part, guys still have that same confidence that they're going to be in that way, but they don't have the actual uh, offers or the, the other than like a text from a coach saying, hey, how are you? And that kind of thing. They don't have the, the collateral to show that they really are that type of prospect, which is fine. And I think that there's this narrative that guys have to be recruited so early and so quickly. But in the olden days, you know, seniors were the only guys that were being recruited yeah. anyways. So we're seeing a little bit of a throwback to how the recruiting calendar used to work. But to that end, 
there are still players who are, are, are typically um, highly recruited guys that don't really have a feel because right now the high school players, as you mentioned, are probably at the bottom ladder or bottom rung of the recruiting ladder. And that's just the way that it goes. We have 1,200 grown men in the transfer portal. That's where college coaches are going to want to look. So I think it's important, and I, and I wanted to kind of articulate this in our conversation today, Austin. I think it's important for players and moreover for parents and, and guys that are people that work with young people with their travel programs just to be patient. Yeah. And I know that you hear that a lot, but it's, it's going to be really important to do a couple of things. Acquire great film from top to bottom, okay? Make sure that you have advocates in your corner, whether it's your travel coach, your high school coach, guys like me and you, people that are in the business that are on there all, you know, all the time. And that's really the most important thing that you can do is to continually build your resume. And on top of that, and I've said this for 20 years, the best thing that you can put on your resume is that you win basketball games. Yeah. Okay. If you're a winner, guess what? People that are winners, people that are champions, you have five to six more games in yep. your, in your real than everybody else. Why? Cause you played more games. <laughs> And Easy. you're winning. And so I think that's really important to stack those good days up if you're a prospect. And when that timeline will come around, it'll come around the time that it's supposed to go in the new recruiting calendar that we're at. Let me take it one more step further. I know I keep banging on this, but we don't have had college coaches haven't had players on campus for elite camps. We haven't had team camps. We haven't even had the academies, which they canceled again for the second year uh, yesterday. Uh, we haven't had, uh, you know, that many players taking their own uh, out of their own pocket, take unofficial visits because of different protocols on college campuses. And so and, and every college coach that I've talked to, like I'll like really sell a player like, hey, you need to go recruit this guy, coach. He'll say, well, we got to see him in person. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. You can't. And so that's why we have this go back to the question when you ask the player, how is your recruitment going right now? And there's a blank look. So that's how we kind of have to walk it back. And so in order to walk it forward is to stack up all those things that we've talked about, you know, play at our events, get full game, uh, you know, clips from be the beast. Or if you play at other events, whether it's baller TV or SUV TV, or even your own homegrown stuff that, you know, you got a mom on the sideline with an iPad recording again, yeah. do whatever you got to do. The full games are really important, but what you do within those full games, don't, don't try to overdo it. Don't try to over impress, play your game. And, and again, stay the course. And I know that's really the hard thing, but I think the hardest thing sometimes is doing the work. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, JY. And, and like you said, man, having competitive games and competitive film, that's one thing our partners with Be The Bees have been able to do for us because, you know, hoop scene, we've been fortunate to have a ton of great teams that come through compete, but now actually having that video package to go alongside of that, the film is there. And, you know, coaches are saying, oh, we got to come see him first. That's that's almost going to be the hardest thing to do this year, man, with the time no and everything. Well, that film's that film's so important to Austin is yeah. because even like, you know, I'm now I'm out here in Phoenix, Arizona now. Okay. I'm, I'm out West. And I go back to the film that I've watched, mm -hmm. or I mean the games that I've watched, I'm going back and rewatching that film. Right. And so far, I think for us and our team, I think we're actually have a better opportunity to have better evaluations right. because we're so reliant on the film now too, that I'm really impressed with our team and what we're doing as far as making sure that we're getting the information right. And we're not getting so caught up in the moment of the event where there, there's a high wow factor that we can kind of rewind it back and really watch the film. So I think that element is really important too, to make sure that we have really honest and, uh, and really well thought out evaluations of players too. Yeah, man. Spot on JY. That, I, man, I, I talked to so many players and parents that were just so grateful to have that provider like be the beast where they can go and get the clips and watch that game film truly game changer for us, man, at hoop scene. So JY, let's look at it from another perspective. When you've got a college, for example, you know, Florida pro hat Taylor Hendricks, who reached recently made the commitment to university of central Florida. And so when you have a player who decides to make that decision early, it, it seems like in a way, man, it's like when you get an offer, you kind of want to go ahead and take it and hold on to it. And, and for coaches, hey, if you see a player early that you're, you're high on, you want to go ahead and try to get them as soon as possible as well. What's your take on that? And, you know, Taylor having his commitment to uh, Central Florida already early in the travel ball season. Yeah, I think what we're going to see over the next couple of years are situations just like what we see with Central Florida and Taylor Hendricks, where there's a really good regional player. So you don't have a lot of schools out of the region that can come in and watch and play Florida, as we know is probably, I would argue, one of the three most recruited states in all of the current country for basketball prospects. It's incredibly deep. You have a homegrown guy, an in-state guy like Taylor Hendricks, and a staff with Central Florida who does a tremendous, maybe an elite job of recruiting their in-state talent and really understanding their value. And so when a guy like Taylor Hendricks comes around, he's always been a high-ceiling guy. Anybody that's watched him play 
since he was a freshman at university school playing with Brennan Carey and Scotty Barnes and those guys, they knew pretty, or both of the Hendricks twins for that matter. They both committed to central Florida. I think both, uh, both players were, were pretty well known. We've all seen them, yeah. but this growth, even for me from seeing him from last year, last time I saw him, Ty Young and I went down to Orlando to our friend, Scott Golden and hoop exchanges uh, spring camp that they run. The week later, the, the world shut down. That was the last live event that we were able to see with travel, and, and, and the Hendricks twins were there. And the growth that we saw from him from that time last spring to where we were this past weekend with the tip-off is substantial. Wow. And the, the Thompson twins played like All-Americans. I thought they played like absolute All-Americans, you know, two five-star guys, mm -hmm. elite. But every single game, particularly Taylor Hendricks, was outstanding. Mm -hmm. A three and D type of player that's now going to be six foot ten. I think he might be one of the most important commitments of the class, wow. and I think it goes to to what we've talked about, where it was so important for Central Florida to say, "Hey, wait a second, before anybody else can see him play, okay, we've got to get that locked up. We can't let Illinois come down to Florida yeah. and yeah. recruit this guy, right? We can't let Connecticut get a get a peek at this guy and yeah. let's get him committed. Let's offer him, let's get him committed. And I think that's what we're going to start to see." where and again going back to what we talked about i think annually now i think we may have 50 freshmen a year 50 total okay that can come in and really truly be impact guys right. and what i mean by impact guys being 25 minutes a game yeah you know maybe a you know your top rebounder your top defender or maybe your top shooter some type of some type of niche in a rotation in order to be an impact guy as a freshman you got to be real special or you got to be really unique mm -hmm. and i think taylor Hendricks has a has a a dash of both of those things so much. So like I watched a lot of Dayron Holmes, who's out here in Arizona, mm, Arizona Prep, yeah. who's going to date tremendous, tremendous pickup for Anthony Grant and those guys. A lot of the same things that I saw with Dayron Holmes is what I'm seeing in Taylor Hendricks. Who's going to go to a place where he can play right away. Mm -hmm. And Dayron Holmes to me, I think is one of the top 30 guys in the country and a guy that I think some NBA guys we're talking about, not that far along. And I think Taylor Hendricks, I wouldn't shock me if we have the same narrative for a guy like that. Wow. As good as the Thompson twins were this past weekend, I want to make sure that we talked about that, about how good Taylor Hendricks is and how good Taylor Hendricks can become down the road. Right. Yeah, I, I agree, man. You know, Taylor oozes with versatility and potential. And you no can question. They run homes, man, is in my opinion, spot on. I mean, I had a chance to see they run in a camp a couple of years ago and, you know, that length, the upside and fast forward to now seeing him play out there in Arizona and then getting the chance to actually see Taylor in person. I said, I told myself in the jump, man, on day one, I'm like, those are the Thompson twins, but this Taylor Hendricks kid is pretty good, too. Yeah, no oh, question. Yeah. One, of my, one of my favorite players, for sure. Well, JY, you know, coming up this weekend, man, we've got the Bama Jam, right? And I know everyone's excited. We've got a lot of teams that are going to be in Alabama that they get a chance to make it to the tip-off. From you, brother, what are we looking for as far as in a major event with the Bama Jam, man? What should everyone expect this weekend? Well, we're looking for another busy weekend and so much so like I've got a grid schedule printed out and we're going to have a big time staff and we're, we're going to make sure we get it covered really, really well. Uh, somebody asked me, who, what are the same teams that we had at the tip off that are going to be at the Bama Jam? We have four. That's it. So we have a whole new group of guys that are coming in, a whole new division of our of our hoop scene association that are going to be there. We've got the Atlanta All-Stars playing again. OK, so that's one of our top teams. Atlanta Timberwolves, one of our top teams. Uh, let me just kind of, again, take a look at Norcross Heat. They're going to make their debut. The Tennessee Tigers, a very familiar team within our hoop scene platform. All the while, we've got a lot of the Bama powerhouses like Pro One. We've got JSI. We've got a lot of those teams that play with us. Of course, we've got Hawks Elite, CP25 of our association, uh, and a number of those teams that are coming in. So we've got some high-level teams that we haven't had a chance to see yet this year. And so our team of Brianna Patton, Josh Tech, we've got DeCortland Christian is going to make his debut with us in our, in our hoop scene Alabama team. Yep. Of course, the OG Andre Whitehead from Hoops in Tennessee is going to be there as well. I'm um, very excited about what we've got going on. I'm going to be watching on Be the Beast stream out here in the West. I'll probably have my feet in the pool or something like that out here in Arizona. It's going to be like 95 degrees, Austin. Somebody watching the Bama Jam from afar, like at an Easter egg hunt or something like that. Um, but I'm really excited about what we've got going on. And the Bama Jam last year, I thought it was my favorite event of the year. The Finley Center is a venue that matches what we do with Hoop Scene. It's one of the best in the country, maybe the best in the country. Um, I'll say it is the, the best in the country as far as a multi-court facility. I love when our brand is there. Uh, we got some big time games. And, and the difference with this game or this tournament too, Austin, is it's tournament style. Daniel yeah, Pagione, yeah. our tournament director, has switched it up. And we've gone from showcase games that we did the tip off to more tournament style, which, as you know, it's more competitiveness. 
And, and I like to see that. The Tennessee Blazers is another team that they won it last year in a 17 wow. division. They're back again. So a uh, really strong Tennessee flavor, really strong Alabama, Mississippi flavor. And of course, we've got some Georgia teams coming over, some Florida teams, our typical draw that we usually get from the deep south. So a big time weekend. Our staff is going to have you covered. Make sure you follow us on Hoop Scene. Of course, at Hoop Scene Alabama, at Hoop Scene uh, Florida, Tennessee, Georgia, all of our accounts we've got here in the deep south. We'll make sure we get you covered and, and uh, all of your guys are going to be watched. Man, it's going to be loaded. Jay. Well, one thing I really think a lot of people are going to be interested to see is you mentioned it's going to be tournament style. Right. And just like you mentioned, for those players who need more film, the key is winning. Right. Yeah, so win, you win, win, you win, you get more games and that competitive environment. I know it's going to be off the chain and our staff, man, they're going to, I know they're going to do a fantastic job of taking care of everyone and making sure this thing gets the right notice. So JY, no question. real quick, man, last but not least, want to flex our muscle here just a tad, man. Sure. You know, the hoop scene tip off was a fantastic event. And, you know, you talk about um, having the opportunity to have a staff who's getting at least as many players and teams covered. And we can expect the same thing from Bama Jam. How, how important is it really to play at a place like a Bama Jam or a hoop scene tip off where college coaches have an encyclopedia basically of information on players and teams and they can plug in like to be the beast to watch these teams play live? Man, how significant is that? So let me walk this back just a little bit, okay? So in the last 20 days, I've been on flights to Hawaii, to Dallas, and to Atlanta. So I had a lot of time in the air to think, okay? And in this process of conversation, right before I, I kind of went on this crazy, like, you know, uh, tour across North America from one end of the, of the country to the other, I had a college coach, several college coaches say, can he impact the game right away? Because we got to have, can he be better than transfer? And I've really thought about this you know, as advocates as we are for high school players and also from the business side for what we do for colleges with our recruiting services, I, I've, I've really had to pivot and think about the, the, the nature of our business moving forward. And so I'll get calls on players that I haven't seen in over two years from the prep level. Okay. Wow. So like, I've got to go back and think, okay, I saw this guy play at city of Palms in 2017, or I saw him play at 2018. And so like, I'm going back to my notes, which we, we've, we create so much content at Hoopsing that it, it actually like it kind of triggered like this this um, confirmation of what we're doing and it's doing it right. And the amount of content that we're creating allows us to create, if you will, like a Wikipedia for basketball players. OK, so we've got a historical documentation of what these players have done and where we've seen the progress of their of their game from the time that they were probably, you know, eighth graders all the way to the time they're seniors. So how much growth happened within that structure, which now will give us a better opportunity when they're a freshman or sophomore in college when they transfer, if they transfer, that's what I should say, yep. that we've got, we've got like a, we've got trusted voices within our brand that have been able to watch these players. And I think that's going to be really important because I think that's what recruiting is going to become. You know, the NBA draft, I do a lot of consulting with NBA teams as far as draft stuff is concerned. It's always information. They don't care if he's good or not. They already know that he's good enough. And I think when you're in a transfer portal, there's this assumption that you're already good enough, which I don't necessarily believe that it's true, but I think more things, more times than not that it is. And I think information with the draft stuff is always most important thing that there is. I think that's going to be the same thing for recruiting now with transfers that we've got enough information log and what we've been doing. And I think we saw that with the tip off is there's just constant stories, scouting reports, recruiting information. Um, you know, does a player stay with the same team for the whole time? Right that's usually a pretty good indication. He's probably going to stay with the same college. Yep. But if a player goes from this travel team as a 17 U player from a 16 U to 15 U, 14 U, there's four different teams. Yeah. Odds are he's probably going to transfer in college. Right. Okay. Which again, there's nothing, I don't have any problem with transfers to be on the record. Like, listen, man, do you. Okay. If you feel like it's a better situation, I'm a player advocate from day one. Okay. It's a player's game. Players have the right to do whatever they want to go do. Um, but I think there is, if you're a coach and you're making a business decision as far as your roster is concerned, there is like a backup or, or a, a, a backlog of information that you can find, which will help you make better decisions as far as your recruiting processes and stuff is concerned. So th that's why I like what we do at Hoopsie Austin is because I think we do a really good job of documenting this stuff with the player profiles, which are really robust. We've got great team data powered by U.S. Amateur Database with all of our standings and our, and our points and stuff like that. And then, of course, with our media team getting out there, with what you're doing with the videos, uh, what, our, what our partners at OST and Be The Beast and, and what they're doing, um, and even stuff like Exposure Basketball with, like, the game logs that we've got through that as well. And then our staff of, of over, you know, a dozen people all throughout the Southeast, really all the country now, 
uh, what we're doing there. So I think that's really important and I'm excited about what we're doing now. Uh, but I can't wait for like big events like the Grassroots Showcase in Louisville, which is going to be an absolute monster. Uh, what we're doing at the Lone Star Invitational in Dallas, Texas, which is going to be a monster. And the granddaddy of them all back at the World Congress Center in downtown Atlanta in July, the best of the South, which I think is going to be the best event we've ever had uh, in our history of our company. So very excited about all that, Austin. Yeah, I'm like fired up right now. Just man, going, so. so much basketball. You got to love it. JY, here's something that's pretty cool, man. You mentioned about having um, that access for coaches from hoop scene to be able to go back and see from fouls from a player back when they were in, you know, younger age groups. And that literally, man, this year, you know, this is going to my third year hoop scene. I was able to see a couple of kids that are committed in this year's, or, well, last year's 2020 class and this year's 2021 class. I was like, hey, man, I wrote an article on that kid, you know, a couple yeah. of years ago at Atlanta Gem, at Best, at Bob Gibbons. So, man, you know, Hoop Scene has just done a phenomenal job in terms of all of our staff being able to produce that content for coaches to have instantly. And, man, and in today's situation regarding recruitment, you got to have information. I think that's a key thing yeah. you pressed on as well. Well, Justin, I'll tell you this, man, and for everyone viewing, our schedule for this year is loaded, right? JY mentioned Bama Jam, Grassroots Showcase, Lone Star, you know, best. Um, it's so much great basketball <laughs> and great opportunities for players to be seen. Um, and Justin, man, thank you for your time today. I know this is going to provide a lot of valuable content for all the viewers out there. Well, everyone, I'm Austin Smith, and this is our editor-in-chief, Justin Young. Thanks for tuning in to the very new first series segment of Just a Minute, again, with our editor-in-chief, Justin Young. Jaywa, thanks for your time, man. Thanks, Austin.